And sometimes that can come from re-pressuring tyres. And obviously we're not privy to what went on between Craig and the crew on the radio in the first half of the race. But sometimes a driver might call for a half PSI or a one PSI alteration to tyre pressures, which can help your tyres live if they were over-inflating beyond the target pressure in your first stint. It does look so good, that thing, though, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. We talk about the magic carpet ride. You watch it through some of these turns throughout practice. It just it just looks so comfortable out there. It almost looks slow. It, it's doing it so easily and so unruffled that it actually doesn't look that quick. But that's where he's getting the speed from. It's spending all its time going forward instead of going sideways. So Lowndes looking very comfortable. 3.1 seconds now. He's pumped it out to over three. But look at Scaife just pushing 110% to close the gap to this battle for second between Marcus Ambrose and Greg Murphy. Mind you, if I was Mark, I'd, I'd sort of be thinking, well, what have we got a couple of laps to go? Uh, start on the second row in the second race. This is not too bad. I mean, the last thing he needs to do at this stage is end up in strife. So as they cross the line, this time it's now one to go. Murphy applying the pressure still to Ambrose, but I don't think he's likely to yield. 3.3 seconds that margin Craig Lowndes to Marcus Ambrose that time across the line. Get ready for this grandstand to erupt. Craig Lowndes brings us across in first place. It's extraordinary. The turnaround in fan support. This, this man has generated. There were you know, there are many people who thought Lowndes was only as quick as he was because he was in a Holden Racing Team Commodore, but he's made the switch to this car and this new team and proven equally effective. He's won himself a hell of a lot new fans. And I can tell you, when you look out at the grandstand here, the number of these Gibson Motorsport merchandise, there's a whole silver and black army out here today. You see Lounge's thing through the right and the left in perfect spot on. They, they used time well yesterday in the 45 minute lunchtime session to really do a rehearsed race run, 15 lap stint, and that way you can see where the tyres trend cars well behaved for sure this is i guess the only argument to be resolved whether or not greg murphy can take any ground from marcus ambrose or indeed mark scape that's the top four beyond those fellas for information bright bauer radishish brad jones paul morris paul wheel so a little bit of a mix up in the top 10 but this is another excellent performance from Lowndes. one corner to run and not just craig but the entire gibson motorsport team share in this one onto the final corner down the main straight the stand, the stand, the stand, the stand. Erupts. they get on their feet and craig Lowndes takes race one round three eastern creek a popular victory yeah well done gibson motorsport I'm showing everyone how to do it 2001 An amazing performance once again at Eastern Creek, they dialed the car in very quickly. It was fast here from the moment it hit the track. And Lowndes looking so cool and comfortable leading that one. 3.1 seconds the gap it was at the finish. Marcus Ambrose, a great job to finish second. Such a rookie in V8 supercar. Greg Murphy in third, the first of the Holdens. Mark Scaife behind him. And Jason Brighton, the second Holden racing team car, rounding out the top five. As you say, hero to zero, but it's incredible, isn't it? It's a little seat, and the seat was 17. It's quite, what, what I find quite extraordinary is coming into this season, Gibson Motorsport, or Fred Gibson said, no, if we're sort of qualifying in the top 10 and we get the odd podium here, yeah, I'd be happy with that. That's a pretty good first year. But Lowndes has lifted this team and this operation to another level. The engineering is so strong on the car, and Lowndes is obviously driving it very well. He's so funny to talk to, Gibbo, isn't he? Because he's so straight. <laughs> he explains everything as if it's so blatantly obvious. <laughs> I mean, I think Fred, more than anyone, is surprised at the performance. I don't think he expected to be in this sort of position so early on. Well, Greg looks pretty hot under that helmet. It does. It looks like he's got some of his eyes. 45 minutes around here in a car that's sort of hovering between 45 and 50 degrees with a high heart rate is hard work. Fastest lap of that race did go to Todd Kelly, a 132.86 for the Kmart Commodore driver. As a result of those stops, he ended up 16th. Great Mark. recovery from Mark Scaife to get up to fourth after finding the grass yesterday in qualifying. That's how Holden Racing Team wins so many championships. When they're down, they always manage to fight their way back into contention. And now he's very handily placed for the start of Heat 2. Should be a fascinating battle. Craig Lowndes, though, wins heat one. Marcus Ambrose is second to Ford, one, two. Greg Murphy and Mark Scape. Third and fourth, Jason Bright, John Bell rounding out the six. Paul Radisich and Brad Jones, good performance in the Aussie male Ford. He's inside the top ten.
Then we had Paul Morris in ninth. Paul Wheel, great performance. McLean, Longhurst, McDougall, Richards coming back from after leading for a lap or so there. Stephen Johnson, Todd Kelly, the fastest man in the race in 16th. Then Glenn Seaton, Tratt, Bernard, Tander, Doolman, Larkham, Ingle and Perkins. We're back with you in just a moment.